Hi everyone, my name is Milan and today we're going to be talking about the specification pattern. I'm going to show you how you can implement the specification pattern with NAD Framework Core and we'll see how we can use this pattern to really simplify our existing repository implementation. Let's jump straight into the code and see how we can implement the specification pattern. We are starting out in the gathering repository and I want to show you a few methods that we already have implemented here. We have the getByName method which queries the gatherings table and searches by the name that we specify as the argument. We also have a few getByID methods. They differ in how they are implemented and what other navigation properties or tables they are including as part of the query. As you can see here, we have free include statements here we also have a get by ID method with one include statement. We have another get by ID method with another include statement. This is a common occurrence with NAD framework repositories if you want to be careful with how much data you are returning from the database. Let's first implement the specification pattern and I'm going to explain what the specification pattern is along the way and then we're going to see how we can use the specification pattern to really simplify the gathering repository implementation. I'm going to create a new folder inside of the persistence project and I'm going to call it specifications. Inside of that folder I'm going to add a new class which is going to be our base specification class. I'm going to make this class public and it's going to be an abstract class because I don't want to create an instance of this class. We are going to be creating instances of the implementations of this class. The specification pattern is supposed to represent a requirement that our database entities are supposed to meet in order to satisfy this specification and to be returned from the database. The base specification class is going to be a generic class with a T entity generic argument. We can even add a generic constraint where the T entity has to implement our entity base class, which we are using in the domain project. Now I'm going to add a few things inside of the specification that we will be using to build our actual requirement. The first thing that we are going to need is a way to specify a criteria that our entity has to satisfy. This is going to match our where statement and I'm going to use an expression and a function that accepts a t entity and returns a bool. A function that takes in an object and returns a boolean value is also called a predicate. So I'm going to name this property criteria and it's only going to have a getter. Another thing that we need is a way to specify our include statements. For this, I'm going to create a list that's going to contain functions that accept a T entity and return an object. I'm going to call this property include expressions. And we can even initialize this property to be an empty list at the start. Let's also add a way for us to define an order by statement. I'm going to create another property for that. It takes in a function with a t entity argument and returns an object. I'm going to call it order by expression. I'm going to make this property nullable because we don't have to specify an order by statement always. And since we have an order by expression in place, let's also create an order by descending expression. I'm going to use the existing property and just name it order by descending. I'm also going to make the criteria nullable because I want to be able to specify a specification that does not have a where statement. I'm going to create a few protected methods inside of the specification class. The first method that I'm going to create is going to be an include so that we can specify an include expression. It's going to need an argument of an expression of a function that takes in a t entity and returns an object. We're going to call it include expression. And we're just going to add this value to our include expressions list. Let's also create methods for specifying the order by expression and the order by descending expression. So the first one is going to be add order by. It takes in an expression of a function that takes in t entity and returns an object. This is going to be the order by expression. And we're just going to set the value of the order by expression property inside of this method. It's giving me a compile error that it is read only, of course, because I forgot to add the property setter. So I'm going to add a private setter here and a private setter to the order by descending expression. 
I'm going to copy the add order by method and I'm going to use it for the add order by descending. So add order by descending. I'm going to rename the argument here, order by descending expression. And we also need to set the appropriate property value. So instead of the order by, we need the order by descending expression. So we have our specification implementation in place. I'm just going to add one more thing, which is going to be a constructor. The constructor is going to accept a criteria and we are just going to set the criteria property value. So this is how our specification looks like. We're going to use this class to define a query similar to how we would do it with NAD framework. We're going to start off simple. I'm going to create a gathering by ID specification and it's going to include a creator. So I'm going to call it gathering by ID with creator. All right, let's implement the specification class. The generic argument is going to be our gathering entity. All we have to define is the constructor. So I'm going to say public gathering by ID with creator. We're going to accept a gathering ID as the argument for this constructor. And we're going to use it to specify a criteria that we're going to pass to the base constructor. So I'm going to define a function here that takes in a gathering and checks that the gathering ID is equal to the gathering ID that was specified as the constructor argument. So this takes care of the gathering by ID part of our specification, but we also need to remember to include the creator. For this, we have the add include method on our base specification, and I'm going to define an expression to include the creator. And this is how our gathering by ID with creator specification looks like. I'm actually going to append specification to the end of this class's name because I want to make this into a convention that all the classes implementing specification should end with specification as well. So now that we have our concrete specification implemented, how are we going to use it inside of the repository? We are missing one more component to be able to do that. And I'm going to add another class for this component. What we are missing is a specification evaluator. And this is just going to be a static class that is able to take our concrete specification and produce an iQueryable that we can execute with NAD framework. We're going to define one method in here that is going to be called getQuery. It's going to return an iQueryable of the entity which is going to match our entity on the specification. So let me name the method getQuery. It has a tEntity generic argument and it's going to need two input arguments. One is going to be the input queryable. So I'm going to call it input queryable. And the other is going to be our concrete specification. We're going to use the base class type so that we can specify any concrete implementation as the argument. And we also need a generic constraint so that the compiler doesn't yell at us. So we need to say where the entity is an entity coming from our domain. So what do we have to do to evaluate our specification? So I'm going to create a variable of the entity. I'm going to call it just queryable. And I'm just going to assign the value of the input queryable. So let's start evaluating our specification. The first thing I'm going to check is if the specification criteria is not null, then I'm going to apply a where statement to our queryable. I'm going to say queryable where and just pass in specification criteria. After this, I'm going to process our include expressions. So I'm going to do that by accessing the include expressions property. And I'm going to call a link you method on it, which is going to be the aggregate method and it takes in two arguments. The first is the seed value, which is going to be our queryable. The second argument is going to be a function that takes in the current value of our aggregation result, which is our queryable, and the current value of the list that we are iterating over, which is going to be an include expression, and it returns a new aggregated value, which is going to be current, which is our queryable, and we're going to call include on this queryable and specify the include expression. And this is how we can process the include expressions on our specification object. 
and what's left to cover is the order by and order by descending statements. So I'm going to check if the specification order by expression is not null. In that case, we're going to apply the order by on the queryable. So I'm going to say queryable is going to receive queryable ordered by the specification ordered by expression. If the order by expression is null, I'm going to write an else statement and I'm going to check if the specification order by descending expression is not null. And if it isn't, I'm going to do something similar. Just instead of order by, we're going to say order by descending and specify specification order by descending expression. So now we have processed the specification object and we're going to return the resulting queryable and use it inside of our repository. So let's go back to gathering repository and see how we can use the specification pattern to simplify what we have in there. I'm going to create a private method here that returns an iQueryable of gathering and I'm going to call it apply specification. It takes in a specification instance of gathering as the argument and we're going to use our specification evaluator here to evaluate this specification and return a resulting iQueryable. So I'm going to say specification evaluator get query. We need to pass in two arguments. One is the input queryable. For this, I'm going to call db context set and specify gathering. And the second is going to be our specification. So this method is going to take in a specification instance and return an iQueryable. Let's see how we would use it inside of the getBID with creator method because this is the specification that we have created. I'm going to get rid of the existing implementation and I'm going to first call our apply specification method and pass in a new specification instance. This is going to be the gathering by ID with creator specification. And I'm just going to pass in the ID as the argument. And what we get back from this method is an iQueryable of gathering that has the same condition that we had in this method. It has an include on the creator navigation property and it queries for the gathering with the ID that is specified. I'm going to call first or default async on this queryable as we had before. And I'm just going to await this call to satisfy our asynchronous method. As you can see, this really simplifies the method in our repository. I'm going to show you one more example Let's go to the start of our gathering repository where we have the getByName method. I'm going to create a specification that is going to represent this query. I will say gathering by name specification. Let's implement the base specification class, passing gathering as our generic argument. And we need to define a constructor. We're going to need the name that we are going to query on as the argument for this specification. So the expression that we had in the repository was string is null or empty name or the gathering name contains the name that we have specified. Let's add the include statements that we had in the repository, which was the creator and also the attendees. So I'm going to call add include gathering and specify the attendees. We also had an order by expression. So I'm going to call add order by and specify that we should order the gatherings by the name. And this completes our specification definition. So I'm going to go back to the gathering repository. I'm going to get rid of this part here and call apply specification. And I'm going to specify the gathering by name specification and just pass in the name. And you can see how much this simplifies our method. I'm going to show you one last example. And we're also going to start the application and see our specification in action. But before that, if you are liking this video about the specification pattern, make sure you smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel to show me that you care. So back to our gathering repository, I'm going to add another specification to represent this query. I'm going to add a new class to represent this specification. I'm going to call it gathering by ID. And I'm going to add split to it to represent that this is a split query and add specification to the end. So let's quickly implement our specification. We're going to specify gathering as the generic argument. Let's define a constructor. The only argument our constructor needs is the gathering ID. 
and we're going to use it to define an expression to pass into our base constructor. So gathering ID equals gathering ID the argument, and we need to define the include statements. So we had an include statement on the creator, and I'm going to copy this for the other two. We also had attendees and invitations. If we go back to the repository for a moment, notice that I'm specifying that this is a split query, but we don't have a way to specify this inside of our specification. So we need to extend our specification implementation. So let's go ahead and do that. At the top of our method, I'm going to add another property. It's going to be a Boolean property, and I'm going to name it as split query so that we can set it inside of the classes implementing our specification. And let's go back to our concrete specification class and specify that it, this is indeed a split query. And also what we need to do is process this flag inside of the specification evaluator. So let's go down here at the end and say if specification is split query, then query becomes queryable as split query. And that's it. And you can apply the same principle if you want to extend your specification with other things. One thing that comes to mind is paging. You could add two integer properties that are going to be your page or page size or even skip and take. And as you can probably guess, you're going to use these values to skip and take on the queryable to implement paging. Let's use the specification that we just defined inside of the repository. So I'm going to replace all of this with the call to apply specification and we're going to create a new specification instance. We need the gathering by ID split specification and pass in the ID as the argument. So let's add a breakpoint here. I'm going to start the application and we're going to see how our specification actually works. We are going to send a get request from Postman to our API to fetch the gathering by ID. And this is going to hit the breakpoint that I just defined. So we hit our breakpoint and let's slowly go over the code and see how this actually works. So we first step into our specification. We call the base constructor and the add include methods to specify the includes. And we set the is split query property to true. Then we are going to step into the apply specification method, which is going to call our specification evaluator to evaluate our specification. Let's go inside. So the first thing is it checks if the criteria is null or not and applies the appropriate where statement. In our case, the criteria has the expression to check the gathering by ID. So we're going to apply the where statement. Now we need to aggregate all of our include expressions. If you recall, we had three of them, the creator, the attendees, and the imitations. Now we need to apply our order by and order by descending expression if they are not null, but since they are both null, we're just going to step over those. And at the end, we're going to check if is split query is set to true. And you can see that it is indeed true, which means we are going to step into the if block and call the queryable as split query to specify that this is a split query. And at the end, we return the resulting queryable back to our repository. The apply specification method is going to pass it to the get by ID method, which is going to call the first or default async method, which actually hits the database and returns our gathering. We are back in our query handler, and as you can see, we did get the gathering back from the database and our specification did the job. So this was the implementation of the specification pattern with Entity Framework Core. If you liked this video, then make sure that you watch the two videos that you can see on the screen, which I prepared for you. And until next time, stay awesome.